these lights do justice for artwork. A hundred percent. When I take them to Lincoln Studio, uh, you know, so dark in there normally. Yeah. But you take these because I take these to photograph his yes. work and you switch them on and suddenly, oh, boom, oh yeah. It just brings I mean, them to life completely. That, it, it, at Saatchi, your work just was like, wow. When you walked in, it's all white. And yeah. the light in there, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. the lighting's great wow. in there, actually. Yeah. In this episode, we <laughs> have international artist Lily. Welcome to okay. the podcast. Ah, welcome, thank you for having me. It's lovely. Thank the you. The podcast. There's a lot going on out there and we want to share it. And, you know, it's, it's to do with looking at, you know, the idea of artist sharing rather than it be something that's sort of encapsulated into what their you know day-to-day -day life yeah. yeah and yeah it's sort of loosening all that all up and uh -huh. saying we've got something to talk about i don't think there's any such thing as competition with art because mm. it's so different one person is so different from another there's no very, such thing as very diverse yeah. very diverse mm. absolutely yeah. i totally agree. that's the way i see it ah. i see it like that and you are, you know, you're the hairdresser to the stars um, <laughs> and you um, you paint. And yes. we, we had that connection because mm -hmm. if you look at the history, my history, uh, 10 years ago, um, I was just coming off the back end of running, you know, nightclubs, strip clubs, mm -hmm. you know, um, and uh, it's something I'm I'm proud of. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it's it's uh, it didn't. Um, it didn't develop into me painting and selling works immediately. It was something that I felt I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I've always painted, just like yourself. Yeah. And we used to have talks about it, if you remember. I remember some of your works Yeah, in, when I used to come down to London with Denise. Yeah. And um, I remember some beautiful pieces in, yeah. in the apartment. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I in used your to... kitchen, is that where you get them? More or less, yeah. yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. It, was, it was anywhere that I could possibly could do it, to be honest. Them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, the I'd... kitchen, under the bed, in yeah. the cupboard. You've got it. Yeah. Mm. Some of the ones I used to actually hide under the bed because they were too scary. That's the way I saw it. That's the way I saw it at the time. Stuff of nightmares. The stuff of nightmares. <laughs> but then I started to develop, um, you know, a way of being able to, you know, push myself out and be confident about what I was creating. And I think that was um, definitely a synergy between you and I of how that was going to, you know, develop. Yes. And I think that, you know, seeing that as a, you know, a part of um, sharing at that stage even was, uh, was very new to me because mm -hmm. I, you know, I saw this sort of, uh, energy building in me that I was thinking I could possibly sustain a living from selling my artwork, yes. you know, which is, which is, you know, we, we all want to look at that as artists. So this is what I'm going to sort of hand over to you, Lily, about what, how do you see, you know, from where you started? So you're, you know, you're cutting hair, you're painting, mm -hmm. what, you know, what really gave you that drive? What was the change? What was the point of change where you said, you know what, I'm going to really throw an awful lot now into the art. Yeah, I'm, um, I mean, like yourself, I painted for years, but obviously, and I was the hairdresser for 27 years and painted alongside of that for a long time. Mm. Um, and then, but I just, the passion for the art just seemed to always be more, you know what I mean? Hairdressing, I was just naturally good at. Mm. With art, it was just something that was almost like a, a release, a, medita a meditative thing for me to Absolutely, do in an yeah. evening, at weekends. Mm -hmm. And then when we met, and it was interesting to see your journey, the way that you really grabbed hold of it and went for it. And it's like, I was so scared of taking that step myself mm. because I was so scared of the no's. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't like that. And it's like, well, that's okay. That's how I feel now. That's fine. But I used to be petrified. Petrified. Petrified yeah. of putting myself out there and they not... Pull it, not pulling it off and people saying, well, that's a load of rubbish or, you know. I've had it. I've had it all. Mm. I've had people laughing at my work and, you know, well, what are you even, what are you even doing here? That was, that's the one that stuck with me. Mm. I walked into a, a gallery, you know, thinking this is the way you sell art. And they said, what are you even doing here? <laughs> you know, I think I even, I mean, I, I think I even shared that with you many yeah, years ago when we first started talking yeah. about your journey, mm -hmm. you know, and because that was one of the things that I learned very, very quickly is that we needed to, you know, we needed to look at, you know, if if, if Lily is going to get her work out there, you've got to start looking at a no mm -hmm. as something that's good. We have this, we you have this idea. You said to me, you said to me, it's not a no, it's a delayed yes. That yeah. always rings when you said that to mm -hmm. me and I'm like, do you know what? I'm just going to bloom and well go for it. Good. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, and it, yeah even, and, and yes, you get knocks and you get, you know, people saying no or, and it's like, okay, mm -hmm. 
And the thing is, it's like, it's all right when your friends say, oh, you're really talented, but they're your friends and your family. It's not the same. But when you put yourself on that, that out there. Yeah. But I don't have the fear with that anymore. Yeah. No, that's Be good. That's good. I don't know whether that's possibly a bit of age-related things as well. Uh, no, it's a, I, think it's it's a con I think it's a confidence in your work. Yes. I think the, the work confidence is there. I've seen my work evolve yeah. and develop. Yeah. So with just I. keep Yeah. With just keeping going and yeah. keep trying and keeping trying different things, mm. trying and really scooping out of myself and, mm. and just without w wondering, oh, is this going to work? Oh, is that going to sell? Or I just stopped thinking about that and just started focusing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's, scooping's a good word. I've scooped an awful lot out of myself. <laughs> um, yeah, double it's, scoop. <laughs> double, double scoop, please. Yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, you see, this is what this, is what this talk is about. Mm. And that's where the sharing, you know, all the things that you've said is it brings back the memories of what we used to talk about. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about, you know, I'm, how am I going to keep motivated? You know, I, I, I've been saying this and I'll always say it. The thread is motivation is somebody saying, I want your artwork on my wall. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I want your sculpture in my garden. Yeah. You know, that this is, this is where the juice is, you know, this is what we're looking for. And the only way we're going to find that is by pushing out and reaching out. You know, you've got, you've got, I'm right here, 12,000 yes. followers on Instagram. Yes, I have now. You know, I'm, you know you've, you've been pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and people have grasped onto your journey and wanted to know more. You know, I remember when you had a few hundred. I remember yes. when I had a few hundred, <laughs> yeah. you know, and this is where it's gone. The thing is with it as well is it's not about you know, um, numbers. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the quality of what you've got in there watching you mm -hmm. and wanting to see your journey. How do you find, um, how do you find, um, social media works for you? What, so you, just you, what, what's your feeling of it? I think it's basically made me go to the next level. Mm. It's been a, um, a game changer completely. When I took your advice and I did the prop, cause I had, uh, an Instagram account that was just, it looked like um, a teenager put it together, basically. And you said, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. And it was a business Instagram that I started. And it was just, and just, I did it so it looked professional, a portfolio. And and so people could get to see me. Yeah. And the numbers just went yeah. up. Yeah. And it's something that it was we, consistent, though, I, absolutely. every single mm. week, mm. two to three posts, not overloading it, though, and quality mm. and showing progression in pieces, yep. showing, you know, past works sold, even sold pieces, you know, pieces in situ and in, in, you know, in gallery. Yeah. And but I, I kept it in my style. Well, like in a style, a certain style that people could tell it was. Mm. Absolutely. You're yeah. opening up yourself to the world, yes, right? Yes. Showing them all the different aspects of your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your processes as well. Do you, do you show much processes? I, I, I do um, some videos. Yeah. I've started, it's actually, um, uh, I have someone who does my Instagram now. Great. Mm -hmm. um, Natalie, she's fabulous. And she's got such a really, I mean, I just, I do all my videos because I, I set up my little tripod mm -hmm. in, in my studio and I do like time lapses as well. I love doing time lapse because yeah, it, it's brilliant. Yeah. And I love doing, you know, just even uh, normal like videos of just like a, a just a process, like a, a short process, not, yeah. not too long winded. No. Um, and yeah. And, and I do snapshots of the bit from all the way through yeah, and, and I just send progress. her everything and she's fabulous mm, and yeah. she just put it together for me because I did start doing it myself but then I'm thinking well the more I'm doing that the less time I'm actually spending mm. doing the painting mm. yes yes but I'm always involved in it and I always you know we, we're very we've got a really good relationship with that yeah and you've great. seen the value in that presumably you've oh, seen the value in consistent in having, output and having someone be able 100%, to 100 percent it was a game changer mm. consistency and keeping just keeping your enthusiasm going yeah. even through lockdown mm. it was i'm still gonna go and i mean i you know had a fantastic um you know three sales during lockdown yeah i know i know you told me no absolutely but it's it's it all about press, you know just you got to press forward and mm -hmm. and just get on with it it's this is one of the things about looking at um i always come back to this motivation yeah what, what you know is I always think to myself, if I could bottle it, what would it what would it look like? Uh, you know, it's it's a I'm I'm quite naturally 
driven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I and I don't mind sharing that. It's something that I think this this is what this is about sharing yeah. this. And it's about, you know it's like when I saw your brochure. Just I was I was blown away by mm. that brochure. Beautiful. I mean, you got yes. some hard copies coming out next yes, week. Yes, yes. I've just you know created my brochure for my show. You know, you're you're creating something that stands up for you when you're not there. Yeah. So the point being is, is that, you know, it, whether it's professional Instagram, you know, so you look at your social media as, yes. as being the, the, the something that's there for you uh -huh. if you're not there. Exactly. I always say that. I always say I want something to be able to stand up for me when I'm not around. Yes. So that's the development of the brand and an artist. That's mm -hmm. how you develop. Yes. You've got to be thinking like that. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, like you say, you've given me some amazing advice and I followed it and look what, what where it's got me. Yeah. That's the thing. It's you can have, you can let fear get in the way or you can go, do you know what? I'm giving some great advice. I'm going to follow that advice mm -hmm. and I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Because what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's it. Well, it's a mindset. And it's exciting. It's so exciting it's to see. It's a mindset. See. Yeah. You know, and, and that motivates more to create more. And because, I mean, to have that, purpose while creating i've always just painted because i love to paint mm. absolutely love it it's just yeah. a release for me but it's just a different level of having that that wonderful feeling of someone loving a piece so much they want to possess it they want they want it yes they yes. want it in their home they want to look at it every day what a great feeling is that mm. yeah it's amazing yeah well i mean dk's here uh, and he he does all my mm -hmm. photography, yeah. so he makes he makes all the things look good. I always say this. But the most does. challenging work I've ever had to do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, and it's like like my work, your work, um, has got an awful lot going on, mm -hmm. uh, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got that texture, and so to do that, I'm just holding up one of your original pieces here. Yeah, very beautiful. Um, with the textures here, very hard to be able to get that as a print. Yes. Now, DK has the technology, you know, to do that. And that's something that I want to look at mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I think with us looking at, you know, building this sort of um, road to success, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get a lot of potholes along the way. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. of the things is, is be able to open up a new market mm -hmm. to be able to get accessible pieces, yes. you know, at a lower price point to get people involved in you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. this is this is the first year that we've created um, a print collection mm -hmm. for the whole works, wow. you know, and that's what I was saying to you about bringing some pieces in, yeah. getting the photography right. Doing, uh, I always call it keep do a short run of prints. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not one for looking at like doing, you know, fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty. No, not really. I, uh. I, I find that lets it go. I think to keep the numbers quite small mm -hmm. um, and to keep the prices high. Yes. Let's not let's not muck around. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is important. Exactly. You know? keep, I keep my my numbers low, but I want the right yeah. money for them. Well, I mean, that's the thing. That was always my downfall. Was I, uh, I hate hated talking money because. Mm. I've never been good good at it. I'm a woman, you know. I'm I'm and I'm, I'm me, and I've always found it very uncomfortable when someone said, "So how much is that?" Mm. And now it's like, well, it's that. Yeah, it takes me. Yeah, the com weeks. It's confidence. Yeah, and it is worth that. And if you don't want to pay that, well, someone will. Someone will. It's it, good enough. Li yeah, a no is not now. Yeah. No, no is. I'm not going to buy it right now, but I'm not. You know, yeah. so that it's that's that's a very very good point. Very very good point. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's um, pricing. Um, it's like knowing your worth as well, isn't knowing it? Knowing your worth, yes, absolutely. I mean, and that that leads me on to um, when I heard um, about you taking this sort of five week residency in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you know, we, we were talking, you know, nine years ago, and you'd started to say, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really interested in my art. I'd love you to see it because yeah. I'm at that I'm at that early stage uh -huh. as well. And then next minute, uh, you know, we travel a few years down the line and you're in New York. So tell us a bit about New York. How did you get that? What was the dynamic of, you know, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to New York for five weeks. I mean, not many people do that. No, You've I done mean, it, so. it, it was, I've never been afraid to travel. When I was younger, I used to do an awful lot of travel when I was modeling yep. before it was hairdressing. Yep. So I used to do a lot from when I was, so for me, getting on a plane on my own wasn't that scary, but getting on a plane to go to New York for five weeks mm. to paint was pretty scary. Yeah. But how could you not? How could I not? No, how could you not? You know, I mean, it was just, absolutely. I mean, it was through Instagram. Yeah. It was through my business Instagram. Yeah. I was approached by um, a gallery in New York. It was a really cool, funky place. And um, 
And they said, oh, we, we, if you wanted to, we, we do, we can come and, and paint. Yeah. And then there's an exhibition at the, the, the end of uh, when you're there. Yeah. And that's like, thought, a work, like a workshop, but it's sort of, yeah. you're, so you're sort of expressing your creativity in another city. Yeah. You know, in another part of the world, but you actually get a show at the end of it. Yeah. That's great. And it was, and I thought, yeah. And, and, and my wonderful fella, Tim, he yeah. was like, go do and it. do it. Yeah. I mean, that's having support of a really good partner as well is, has made me more confident and to have someone go, do you know what, darling, you, you go, you mm. do that. Mm. Good, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Because I would go to the, the gallery seven days a week. I thought, I'm not here for a holiday. Mm. I'm here to paint. Yeah. I think they definitely thought I was the crazy English girl. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm just nipping to the coffee break. Does anyone want a coffee? And I look, literally looked like I'd off offered my firstborn child because no one does that in New York. I didn't right. realize that. And then before you know it, everyone was loving me. Oh, hi, Lisa. Hi. Okay. You <laughs> oh, know, nice. but it was like, you said, what, a coffee or sandwich? Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Manchester, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, you go yeah, for yeah. a coffee, you see if anyone wants wants a coffee. Yeah. Or, um, oh, yeah. Well, it's very hard, hard nosed uh, you know, business in New York, isn't it? Yes. So, sort of going from that to, you know, to, to being online. So, that, there's a, you know, there's a, that's, a, that's a huge difference. Oh, you yeah. Know, that's a huge difference. So, what do you, what do you see as being like your, what do, you, what do you see being your sort of, what is your weekly, what's your routine? What do you do with in regards to, you know, splitting your time between marketing and selling? Because I mean, this is, this is one of the things that always comes up is that mm -hmm. where do, where's the split? Like DK says, my split is 100% either marketing or 100% either lost <laughs> in the studio covered in paint. So, and I think he's right in saying that. Yeah. And that, that actually organically came out of one of these podcasts and I, he's absolutely right. But so what, where do you see it being? Do you find that you need to be absolutely like fully processing your, you know, your painting head? And then do you have a time that you would go straight into saying, actually, you know, what, I'm going to do some marketing now. I'm going to look on LinkedIn. I'm going to start checking out yeah. some groups, see what's going on. How does it work? I definitely, now I've got my, my, my studio set up, you know, my bigger studio yeah. and I've got, and I'm on it weekly with doing, keeping up on my videos. I do allocate two or three hours to, or, or more sometimes depending on what I'm doing um to checking on like you say going through like because it's good to I think to interact as well on your on your Instagram Definitely. with other artists with, you know and liking and maybe commenting yeah. I think it's important to personalize yourself like that as well and that's you can dedicate a good couple of hours to just doing that a good yeah a good, a good, yeah. I could yeah. a good couple of months yeah but yeah, I mean, you said, um, I just picked up there, you said two or three hours. Do you mean a day? I, I do that about three times a week. About three times a week. Mm. Okay. I'll tell you what's really interesting. I haven't spoken about this before. Uh, I think I mentioned it in an interview once, but um, very interesting. I was looking through my stories. Uh, this was probably about six months ago. And I realized very quickly, um, obviously you've got your audience for your yeah. stories. So your stories go out the last 24 hours. I found that I'd look through the story uh, the story viewers, mm -hmm. and I'd start seeing um, follow people. They may, not, they may not even be following me, but people that are just looking. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go into their profile and see who they are. And what I found was is that you could, you know, you've, if you've got, uh, you know, 10 people viewing your stories, 100, 1,000, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, you know, in that day, you can sort of go through, look at, and you can find out who they are. Now, what you can do from that point is, is that you could pinpoint the ones that you might, you know, that, that yeah. maybe regularly look at you and yeah. you could say, oh, hi, I saw you looked at my story, you yes. know, through a message, don't yeah. message them if they allow you to. It's, it's, it's a tool, which I think is very underrated. Yeah. No one really talks about it, but as an artist, yeah. for someone to be looking at your story, and you see, you know, Mary's looking at my story. Yeah, yeah. Then Mary looks again tomorrow and I say, oh, hi, Mary. You know, I saw you looking at my story about my new collection. Uh -huh. I'd love to send you a brochure. You know, I'd love, mm -hmm. because sometimes I think as well is that prospects, they'll view you from afar. It's just the same. They don't want to come forward. They don't want to ask too many questions. Mm -hmm. But if you sort of go to them, they'll go, oh, actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I was looking at the, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, world the skulls you were doing or something you know it's like sometimes with my work you know it's um it's it's sometimes not for for all but i always find that um you know with it being i, I look at my work is about what we go through to succeed so i look at the sort of rawness mm -hmm. of the yes. of that of their capabilities yeah. which is something that i feel is embedded in me anyway so you know 
it takes a certain person, in my opinion, to collect my work. I mm -hmm. do. I think living with my work is, uh, you know, is is something that's uh, it's quite choicist. You know, you, you either sort of love it or you hate it in most cases. I do find that. And I'm quite happy about talking about those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But I think as well, when you look at something like that's uh, beautiful, because I would certainly wouldn't say my work falls into the beautiful zone. Um, I'm always intrigued by artists. It's, it's like, very powerful. It's it's incredible. What your work? Oh, thank you. But no, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's. Um, uh, I think but sometimes I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sometimes I wonder, like, how how would the how would my marketing be? if I produced what I would call beautiful work, mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, I paint from the heart. What I, what I paint sort of, sort of just comes out of me. There's nothing I can really do about it. <laughs> so I, I try to, I try to make things, you know, as, as, as um, authentic as it can be to the way I see life. And uh, I just wondered if you could just explain to us when I was younger and I used to draw these very um, pencil drawings of um, elongated female silhouettes, mm. which for a seven-year-old isn't normal. You know, my mum was like, hmm, that's odd. Normally draw a cat or a dog. But I just it was these almost like elfin, like right, elongated, okay. lovely, yeah. elegant yeah. silhouettes. And so I've always drawn them. And I've still actually got the original ones that I've drawn. I still mm. have them at the studio. And... Um, and they're pretty good actually for <laughs> for a young for young person drawing. Very good, but, yeah. Um, good. That's how I I've always kind of been drawn to, um, you know, the female elegance of, of the essence and the elegance of that. You know, I'm 45, so I grew up when it was like you know all the supermodels. You know, when it was like Linda Evangelista and all mm -hmm. these kind, mm -hmm. and that that sort of elegant, real silhouette of a woman. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, most women are like, well, that's not real women. It's like, well. It's it's about the s. That's why it's the essence. Yeah, it's the feeling. It's elegance. That, yeah, you can be you're expressing that feeling, aren't you? Exactly. It's yeah. a feeling, mm -hmm. and it's um, empowering. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To have yeah. that, it's it's almost like just a vision rather than I'm not painting. You know, a fully nude woman yeah. this is about is that, a, is that capturing moments yes, of that feeling. moments yeah, and, oh, and flicks of energy and flares mm. or like you know uh, one of my pieces it's oh i love it you know when you create something you're like oh yeah you got I it spot love on love it yeah. and it's just like yeah. a fire mm. she's on fire mm. and that's you know all or, or this is a very a cooler and she's you know this is when you're feeling reflective you're yeah. feeling a little bit more you know, it's just turning away from the, the world a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, it's all our is, different feelings. All exactly. The, all the elements, yeah. But I, yeah. I just always have been drawn to that just elegance. But when I started doing um, the, the the essence of man and what came out there was just, and again, completely, to me, I was so shocked. At, oh, my gosh, where did that come from? You know, because, but... Yeah, so I, I always see different things in your work, uh, but I do love the the way that you bring texture mm. in. So, sometimes mm. I don't feel there's enough of that. It's, it's um, I'm not, you know, I love I love to be able to sort of um, you sort of feel like you want to touch it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's don't it gives, touch that's it. That's right. That's right. I know. It. I mean, I do actually because I do lots of. You know, when you gave me that advice about trying the gloss, yeah, like a high gloss. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> Wait till you see the one that I've, it's just, it's insane. And that's like, these are high gloss as well. Yeah. But, um, but the texture and like, cause sometimes, cause I do like three or four layers. You, you're a layerer with your gloss as well, aren't you? And oh yeah, like that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the odd person, like the, the last lady who bought a piece and she was like, I said, you can touch it. Like, yeah. Are you sure? Like, yeah. go on. Cause I know you want it. And it's literally, people aren't like, you know, no being rough with it, yeah. but it does. A it, respectful it just, touch. A, a respectful touch. But it does, it just draws you to want to. Mm, I know. You know. I, I cringe when I see people going to touch my No, like, it's like, oh, no, no. It's not dry yet. No. Yeah. no, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. So um, I I wanted to talk about this because I we've, DK and I have been developing this, um, this whole idea of looking at great art and great food. Mm. So uh, next week we're going to a really cool, uh, Italian restaurant in Soho and we're putting in some work of uh, Nat Bowens yeah. and um, I said look let's look at developing this 
you know, as uh, something we can film. And let's sort of talk about all the other ways that we can sell. You know, like I say, if you've got a gallery, great. If you've got an art agent, great. But let's look at all the other ways you mm -hmm. can sell and present your work. And and DK rightly said, if the photography's right, we can do some great prints of Lily's work, you know. And I think one of the things we'd like to do is because we're researching this at the moment and looking into getting you a great location, yeah. which is about celebrating their food and your great art, um, which you know, is is all about art, eat, repeat. So that's mm -hmm. about art. That's about eating, great place, the way your, you know, your paintings are going to be seen by people that are in a relaxed environment. Well, it is, and it's you more, know. well, it's it's the best place, well, isn't I, it, really? I, start, I mean, I started off in hotels and it was great because, you know, that no one's got I to push the door. Well, exactly. Yeah. And people don't have to push the door open in a gallery where maybe they're not going to be that welcome. Uh -huh. yeah. They're there, they're, they're away, they're relaxed. They see some art on the wall. They contact Such me. Such a good idea. That's how it yeah. all started. So that's what I'm trying to share on this as well. So we're excited about looking at you being our Manchester artist. And we're going to find this location. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're doing, you can carry on painting and selling. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to do the, we're going to do the homework and we're going to find somewhere where we can put your work and we can go down and we can celebrate the food that they're creating and bring this experience of the art and food together. Nice. So that's something we're excited about. Really, so we really want to, cool. we want to try to, you know, get that work in, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And we're, we're uh, the teams, the studio's hot to trot on that. So don't uh, don't oh. go anywhere. No, I'm not. No, right, I'm so good. excited. It's gonna be great. Great. Okay. Good. So excited. Brilliant. Yeah. Also, yes. Yeah, so let's talk about sustaining sustaining clients. You know, collectors. Because what? the three in lockdown was were private sales. Right. Which through my which you've always said. You know, if you can, you know, you know, push yourself. Mm. And it was actually one of them was from a Zoom yoga class. Mm. Because I did when when then um, saw lockdown, it behind you in, yes. instead of your well, bookshelf. No, I didn't do my yoga at home. I did it in my art studio before mm. with thinking, mm. and I'm Very thinking good. it's a Zoom of 45 women, or well, <laughs> it was a mixture of men and women, right. and and I thought perfect so you've seen inside my studio it's mm -hmm. lovely mm -hmm. lovely wood floors mm. brilliant it's very lighting. clean lincoln lily but, studio ah, very clean wait. yeah dk loves <laughs> clean <laughs> studios i am proper ah. ocd i've seen your studio and it's not it's not like, clean it's, it's not creative, creative. Nah. it's very creative. Creative. Very, very creative very creative yeah very creative it's like a pollock painting on the floor isn't mm. it so our next our next show is going to be yoga art repeat. Yeah, yeah oh i can do all the yoga stuff <laughs> namaste namaste exactly but seriously I, I was like that's brilliant i, I, I set my it looked fab because i'd like like my tripod with my phone so and because i know people can see you and it was from that that i sold a, a piece that was one of the pieces brilliant Amazing. Art um, sales by Zoom. Yeah. Zoom is something we have not yet considered. Can you imagine? Zoom, I can, Zoom I can, selling. You know, I can recommend a really good online uh, yoga lesson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you can do a bit of downward dog. <laughs> no, uh, not that flexible <laughs> in the yoga area. So the other sales that happened during lockdown, they were private as well? or that was um, One was a, a lady who's actually bought from me previously. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you keep in contact with her? What, where, did, um, she's she's um, on Instagram. Okay. And she always like, and uh, I've started doing a lot more on the stories, or mm. should I say, <laughs> Natalie has started doing a lot more, more on my stories. And people seem to um, react more. And it was when I started doing the stories, then I won't say the name of the lady that's my collector, yeah. but she contacted me. Right. I was like, oh, that piece that I, I got there from you go. last year, I can't believe mm. it's been 12 months. Mm. Um, I would love another piece that to coincide so it was an actual commission so it wasn't a piece that i already had and it was and i love that as well because you get to it's quite connect you know you can sort of like oh what do you, you know what sort of things you have in mind and, and you know yeah it's a nice that's a nice thing to do so the conversation a with your collector just kept going through social media over yeah. those 12 months yes. she was yes you may or may yeah, not have known liked, she, she, yes yeah. and 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 um and yeah it was it's lovely She's a lovely, lovely woman as well. Do you reach That's out to, to, to your to your audience on Instagram? You know, do you ever push out in that direction as well, as, as well as people contacting you? In an evening, I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm either in the art studio or I am on my phone mm -hmm. and I am doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's such a great setup you've got where you've got these, you know, the clients that have come to you for hair for many years, and then you know, like this little this little secret place upstairs that yeah. you've got all these the magical paintings in. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, you know, it's a, it's a great story. Yeah, it's, you know, it's lots of people go through their whole lives, you know, um, w without really 
understanding the joy of being able to look at something they like to create as a hobby yes. and then turn it into something oh, yes. that can give them a standard yes. of living. I mean, that's I mean, the way I saw I used it. To, I used to think that I had to separate the two, you know, from being, um, to be, you can't be seen to be an artist and a hair. And it's like, well, actually that has enabled me hairdressing has enabled me to be an artist yeah to be able to do that and yes i i i don't sit down much let's put it that way mm. i've always been a bit more hyper so yeah. and i'm i'm a night owl so it worked you know i i, I worked you know full time yeah. and i painted in the evenings and weekends mm. um but this is why i always said to you you've got to it's when you find you it's that time mm. management of looking at when i can promote myself yeah. as the artist but, but now and this is a wonderful thing I, now I can work part time, mm. so I'm only working three days because there are women out there, Lincoln, that would hunt me down with pitchforks if I stopped doing their hair. Yeah. And you uh, know, one of them being Denise Welsh, exactly. one of them. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so there is yeah. there is an element of that. I know. But also, I, know. I I actually love the social side. Yes, you do. I and know. it's creative. Yeah, I and, see that. But um, it's definitely the scales have mm. have, have gone in favour now of that's my true real passion. Yeah. What are mm. the next steps on your journey, Lily? Um, to create more beautiful artwork and really just move forward mm. and and get more people um, embracing my vision and and wanting to mm. basically buy my work. I'd like to see, um, I'll tell you one of the things that I was interested in, which I was going to talk to DK about, because it's sort of that the, the hub of our sort of brain dumping is is in the studio. And um, I was thinking just earlier about when, you know, you went off to New York mm -hmm. and I was thinking, what a great thing to do to have like, um, you know, like a an artist getaway, mm -hmm. okay, where oh, you yeah. chose a group of artists. You, you heavily advertise the fact that in five weeks' time, you know, you're going to have something quite incredible to show. You've mm -hmm. got five different minds working on these things and sort of like a, you know, a private show mm -hmm. that you put out uh, that you can you can only come to if you're, you know, invited to come to. And you sort of, you know, the, the group of artists create something over those five weeks and then we find a private space of our yeah. own and do our own show. Yeah. And it's, you know, and these are the things that I think will organically grow out of these times that we're in now. Yes, I would definitely put myself in that all-consuming five-week. That's what I mean. it was, mm. you know, even though... Yeah, we, we, but your life gets in the way. But I was just had that wonderful submersion of seven days a week for five weeks. Right. And okay. I would go and it, and I wouldn't, I'd, yes, I'd obviously stop I'll for tell lunch. You what we're gonna <laughs> do. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to, I'll tell you what, off the back of this, this studio is going to get a big house somewhere hot. Yes. <laughs> right. It's got to be hot. 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 <laughs> Otherwise, my missus won't let me go. We're gonna get we're gonna get somewhere hot, that, a nice big chateau somewhere that oh, we can yeah. all get into. Yes, paint, okay, for a period of time, and then at the end of it, we have a big show. Brilliant. That I am totally. Well, we, we have a showcase weekend. Because I tell you something, when I was there, and for the first week and a half, it was just me. Mm. But then there was like another couple yeah. of artists came, like Pierre, and and it was so cool mm. having that person because he was so eccentric and it was just wonderful and having that fellow creative minds and that was and even there in new york there was no competitiveness mm. do you know what i mean yeah, no, it was yeah, kind of it. that yeah uh, which is it's like you know you can like ask advice or you know or you know just and talk with like-minded people absolutely actually yeah. helps your creative flow 100 yeah. percent. oh yeah there's there's too many secrets in this art world. Yes. There's a new art mm, world now. This that. is the new art yeah, world. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> there's too many secrets out there. We're breaking it all down. Yeah. If there's secret, I don't even want to know about your secrets. I'm, I'm creating my own world here. But <laughs> this is it. And this is what this is. This is about talking, you know, meeting great artists and sharing our mm -hmm. stories and then being able to say, look, there's something out there for you to listen to. If you're an artist and you want to get moving and, you know, and make and make some money, yes. you know, and do something yes. with what you've got, mm -hmm. you know, don't be surrounded in your art. Get it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Great. Fantastic. Great, great takeaway message, Lincoln. Takeaway yeah. message. Yeah, take that away. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Lily. And um, well, thank it's you been for a pleasure to have Lincoln. you. And uh, we're going to do a lot more. We're going to do a lot more. Yes, brilliant.